All right, man, Torture Talk. Back. Make sure you like, share, subscribe to the page. Hit the thumbs up button if you like the content. So today we're going to be talking about, is academics delusional? Does he really believe Drake is his friend? And does all of these mainstream, how would I say, podcasters, uh, outlets or, or, or uh, characters or whatever you want to call them, you know what I mean? Do they really believe Drake is their friend? And if so... Uh, if they don't, then why are they helping him if they don't have any proof of them of him being their friend? So their real friend. So um, we're going to get into this video. And um, of course, we're going to come back and discuss. I'm going to give my commentary towards, towards the video. All right. So this is a this is a free show. Well, I mean, my free show is it's, this can come out anytime. This is not a 8 a.m. 12 or what's the name. So obviously you're going to see this on either a Saturday or a Sunday. So. Okay, so look, let's get to it. Um, before I get to that, let me get my spill. This is Torture Talk. If you like the content, please consider subscribing. They called me the Hidden Gym. I went from 1,300 subscribers to almost 10,000. Oh, actually, over 10,000. Thank y'all very much. If you would like to donate, please cash at PayPal's in the description. I don't sell no merch, but I do have content, and that's absolutely free. All the single, sexy ladies, put one in the chat. All the fellas, y'all know where to find the ones that just don't harass them, all that good stuff. And let me know where you're from. I like to know where people are from. Shout out to everybody that has donated. Shout out to everybody. I feel like we have a close relationship now. All these people, I'm building up. You know what I'm saying? I'm always going to keep it transparent with you guys. You know what I'm saying? So we're going to keep it going. We're going to uplift this thing. So let's go, man. I ain't going to hold y'all too long. You know what I'm saying? So let's go. <laughs> All right, so let's get it, man. If you think Drake finna abandon and forsake all them fans, you got to realize this for the fans right here. You think he going to let some pussy ass niggas have something over him, his legacy, and his fans? No. <laughs> Just watch game two, bro. Just watch game two. You think Drake shows you? All right, look. This is what I want academics to understand. First of all, you you guys, it, I believe that a lot of people, a lot of people in the, a lot of people nowadays, they have what they call manufactured friendships, and a lot of these people, they think that these people are cool or they're friends with them, because they they're cordial with them because they're a superstar and cordial. Academics, Drake is not your friend. Drake is not Maul. Maul Drake's not your friend. He's not your friend. I would go as far as saying, even though I don't, I know Joe Buttons probably knows it, but Joe, he, Joe already know. I don't got to explain that to Joe Buttons. He knows, he knows it. He's not your friend. Let me explain why he's not your friend. Now, see, he threw a party for Baca. Baca, not nice, whatever his name is. He threw a party for him when he got out of jail. That's his friend. That's who he considers a friend. You know what I'm saying? That's who he 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 is. The other the ball uh, um. Beam, that's who he considers 40. That's who he considers a friend. Those people that, that are close to him, whether we say that we don't know if they're friends or not, I believe that's who he considers friends. You know what I'm saying? You academics, he never did an interview on your show. You are, you are, you said you don't meet the biggest media, the best media journalist of all time. How come Drake never did anything with you? He took your, he took, what he does is he uses you, you know what I'm saying, as, as a, a, someone to actually promote for him. That's it. You are a walking, living, promotional tool. That's what you are. So if he did that for you, if he does that to you, he's not your friend. Because if he was your friend, he would have been came on your show. He would have been showed you some love. He took your he took your verse and put it in there. Of course, that helped you out, but he only used it because it was for Kendrick. That's it. Oh, Drake showed me a lot of love. How? What's he doing? 
to show you love. I got exclusive info. I'm hey, on that's not push. love. What do you do with that exclusive info? You say it to the world, you gas it up 10 times more. He's using you as a free a billboard, free that's promo. That, Showing you love is your act. I'm in the city. That. Here's 10 tickets to my show. He Yo. said Ice Spice to Jet before he sent you one. Act, that could be dropping ass music, but you won't say that because you're in number one family. So guys, at this point, can Bro, that right there, let me run that back a little bit. Let me run that back. I want y'all to see his face. This is what they call the face of denial. That's a face of denial. That's like, that's like somebody being in an abusive relationship and someone tells them, I think you should get out of this. I think you should get out of it. And they say, no, 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 everything's fine. Everything's cool. This is what denial looks like. Listen to what he said when the dude said, that's not showing you love. Nah, nah, nah. That's denial. He's living in a state of denial. Drake would never hang with you, academics. He's not your friend. And when you, I think when academics realize this, but it's going to take him a long time because some people, they, they, they become accustomed to abuse. You know what I'm saying? And it's not their fault because they've been manipulated into being a custom of, of abuse. You know what I'm saying? What they call it? Uh, Stockholm Syndrome. They fall in love with the captors. You know what I'm saying? And they start making, making excuses for them. This is what he's going through right now. Like stages of denial. Look at his face. He don't want to believe that Drake's really not his friend. Because it's a manufactured friendship. He thinks because he talked to Drake once or twice. Or maybe five or ten times that they're friends. Some people don't be friends with people for 20 to 30 years. Some people can't out. Some people won't even call people friends for years. I, I listen, I take friendship very serious, right? Very serious. I have, I had, I have, I had maxed out my, my, my friends list on Facebook, right? And because of certain things, I deleted half of them. So now I got about 2,500, right? And I literally went through and deleted half of them. It took me like 10 days, but I did it. You know what I'm saying? I deleted half the people because I want all uh, people that has, that's authentic. You know what I'm saying? That's why I don't, I don't uh, 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 jump into the whole uh, buying views and buying uh, 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 what they call that, um, subscribers and all that. No, I'm not doing all that because everybody that's on this page, I want them to be here because they want to be here. Not because it's some advertisement that they have to click on and then watch for three seconds and then subscribe and then go off and then they win a, 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 a $25 gift card or some shit. Nah, I'm not doing that over here. Everything I do over here is, is, for, is for authentic people who want to be here, who want to hear what I have to say. And I wanna, want them to be here because I can have a, a genuine conversation with them instead of it being a bot. This guy is not like that. He accepts all comers because that's how he is. So he believes that Drake is really his friend. Well, he knows he's not. I know certain, I know sometimes people look at it like, well, that's a life changing thing. Yes, it is. But if you are good at, in life, then why do you need a life changing thing? If your life is already good, what do you need a life change? I mean, it might, it might help. Like, who am me wrong? Drake was to come and say, yo, I want you to, I would ask him what's in it for me. It wouldn't be, oh, because uh, it's Drake. What's in it for me? That's what it would be. You know what I'm saying? And if, and if the deal doesn't line up, I don't care who you are. Because I don't care if you are, I don't care who you are. You could be whoever. But if the deal doesn't make sense, that puts me in a position where I would be fine whether, with, with or without you helping me, that's what I'm doing. But he can't do that. Because he's, he's already committed to something. Look at his face. He's committed. I know that was a long spill, but I had, I had to say that. Act, that's not love. What do you do with that exclusive info? You say it to the world, you gas it up 10 times more. He's using you as a free a billboard, free nah, promo. Nah, nah, nah. Showing you love is your act. Look, look at that. Nah, 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 nah. Because he knows it's the truth. Academics knows that Drake is not his friend, but he will, he will ride with him like Kendrick said, because he won a favor. He wants a favor. Maul is the same way. That whole thing with Maul and him lying like that about the NFL. Oh, the NFL offered Drake four times, multiple times. He turned it down. 
And then you ask him, well, you, they ask him, well, I never heard that. Well, what, what, what made him turn it down? I don't know. Artists do things. So let me get this right. You talk to Drake. You talk to Drake Maul about him turning the Super Bowl down, but he didn't tell you why he turned it down. He didn't tell you. That's when I knew it was cap. That's when I knew he was lying. And you niggas will go as far as doing all this because you you ride with a nigga who's really not your friend. He don't ride with y'all like that because if he did, he would be shouting y'all out in songs. He would make sure that y'all good. He'd be bringing y'all on tour. He'll be doing anything to make sure y'all good. He probably laughing at you niggas like, oh, yeah. Ah, yeah, he cool. I say, ah, ah. You the ah, niggas. That's, that's what you is to him. Ah, that's you niggas. The ah, niggas. I'm in the yeah, city. Yeah. Here's 10 tickets to my show. He Yo. said Ice Spice a jet before he sent you one. Act, they could be dropping ass music, but you won't say that because you're in number one fam. So guys, at this point, Kendrick Lamar has made his decision pretty clear. He's out for blood. The war is not over. He's going to continue stomping on Drake until Drake decides to finally engage in that round two. And just like Drake liking majors instead of minors, this was an absolute joke, all right? It's actually quite the opposite. As of now, in Kendrick's perspective, the war is over. He's back from battle. He took off those dirty Air Force Ones that he's been kicking Drake in with. He won the championship. There's not going to be a round two on his end, but he also has no regrets or apologies for what he did. He's drawing the line in the sand between what Drake stands for and what he encompasses and separates the character traits of himself versus the toxicity and fraud that plagues most of the industry today. On this new record, he's asking us to watch. I just realized something. This is art versus an artist. That's what this is. This is art versus an artist. The artist is Kendrick. You know what I'm saying? The art is Drake. But the thing about the art is... The art is painted by a bunch of different people. The artist is the one who does everything. That's what this is. Drake is the artist. He's the art. He's the science project. He, if, if, you just leave him, if you just leave the piece there, it's just a piece. That's it. Kendrick, on the other hand, is the artist. He's the originator. He's the one who creates. He makes the art. That guy over there is just a piece of art. And if you look at it from that point of view, the art is losing its value. The artist will always have its value. He will always have his value because he can create something out of thin air. That's the difference between the two. Party diet. But Drake's next move is still up for interpretation. Will he insist on letting the party go on? Now, we got to touch on a lot of this video. Number one is, along with Kendrick Lamar, it seems like the whole culture has woken up and there's a joint effort from corporations and massive institutions to tear Drake down. We also got to talk about academics, one of Drake's last supporters within the industry. Because seemingly as he was one of the sole people that was still sticking up for Drake, he's potentially now realized that Drake has been using him for good publicity. We also got to touch on how Drake is speaking through academics by telling him one day that there's going to be a round two and that he's going to win. But once Kendrick brings that up, then there's no round two all of a sudden. And academics is now saying. That's what I'm saying. See, you got to understand this. This is what this is what. what uh. This is what academics got to understand. He, he, he don't understand what he's dealing with. Academics doesn't understand the type of... Per academics, he's not a street guy. He don't understand what he's dealing with. Drake's not a street guy either. You know what I'm saying? But, straight, but Drake is a manipulator. He's a master manipulator. So you got to understand, if he manipulated women, right? Multiple women. I'm talking about women that only men could ever dream of sleeping with. And we talk about women that we know of, you know what I'm saying? The women that we don't know of, you know what I'm saying? If he can manipulate them to a certain extent, you don't think that he's going to manipulate the people that surround him? That's what he does. 
So he manipulates whoever because he knows he has the power. If you listen, if you read some of Drake's tweets when he was dissing Joe Buttons and when he was talking to Anthony Fantano, listen to how he talked to people. He talked to them like they're beneath him. Like you don't have nothing. You ain't shit. You ain't this. You ain't that. Go back. He told Kendrick, that, go stay in that apartment. Knowing that Kendrick is a multimillionaire, Kendrick, because he feels like he's bigger and he has more than all these people. So you think he wouldn't do that to you? If he knows you, all the people that all the people he betrayed, he even betrayed Wayne. He betrayed all these people, slept with their girls and all this stuff behind him, behind their back and all this. And you don't think that he, he don't even know you like that. You don't think that he wouldn't do that to you? What makes you special? You and Maul are not special. Y'all not. I don't understand why y'all don't get it. Y'all not special. Drake never wanted a real round two, bar for bar, to begin with. We also got to touch on how Drake has very few people left in the industry on his side. Even his friends like Lil Yachty and Cardi seemingly might be turning on him. And scarier than that for Drake is that, unlike we've ever seen before in his career, his new records have been continuously flopping. He seems to be in a subtle beef with his own record label. And he's not sure if he wants to continue fighting Kendrick to rebuild his reputation or if he's too scared that messing with the boogeyman once again might do more harm than good. Now, when I say there's a joint effort from corporations and massive institutions to tear Drake down, all you gotta do is take a simple look at some of the biggest events inside and outside of music in the last few months. The biggest one would be the Democratic National Convention, where Kamala Harris was officially voted in as the Democratic nominee. You know what song they were playing at that event? Not Like Us, the PDFL Anthem. A song calling Drake an OV Ho, a freak. A PDF file, a colonizer, a scammer, a fraud, a lovely human being. They were playing that record at one of the biggest political events in the last four years. Think about the magnitude of this record if it could be played in a venue like that. And think about... That's very true. That's very true. I'm not going to spit my my uh, my uh, what, what, political views. But I'm just going to say that's very true that he has not. He has not been invited to any of these big events. And I'm thinking that's the reason why he's waiting for OVO Fest because he hasn't. He hasn't ever since he battled Kendrick. He hasn't done nothing. That's I'm I'm really thinking about that. What has Drake done after this after this battle? He hasn't done anything. Was he at the was he at the VMAs? I don't know. I didn't watch it. But I don't think he was because it would have been all over everywhere. So he wasn't there how the higher ups feel about Drake if they're okay with a record like that playing at such a large event. It's not like that record was like back to back where Drake was hitting Meek Mill with these soft shots like is that a world tour or your girls tour? No, this record was accusing Drake of some of the most horrible things that you can do as a human being. And they're letting- Now, I'ma say this. I understand exactly what he's saying right now. But this, this is what people gotta understand, right? Although hip hop is the biggest genre in certain spaces, it's still not respected as uh important. You know what I'm saying? Hip hop is not important. So with that, with that being said, a lot of people don't look or listen to the words. They listen to the vibe. So even though he's saying all that, they don't, it, it goes in one ear and out the other because it's a vibe to them. It's a lot of people who only care about the vibe of the song. They don't care about what is being said. But the thing about Kendrick is his music comes back around. And then one day, the same person that didn't care about the vibe, I mean, cares about the vibe, they're going to be sitting back in their chair like this. And it's going gonna, it's gonna to hit them. Hey, uh, wait. Trying to strike a chord and it's probably a minor. Wait, a minor? Wait. What? Hold up. Hold up. Colonizer. Then it's going to hit them. They could be driving on a long drive and, and it comes on. They're not like us. They're not like us. Once upon a time, all my brothers in chains. Homie still dubbing down, calling us some slaves. Wait, what? Hold up. Who called us some slaves? Drake? Oh, man. So that's the thing. You know what I'm saying? It's going to hit them. But as of right now, I don't really feel like hip hop is to certain people. It's just a vibe. It's not important to, to people like me. It's important. That's why when with, with uh, Watch the Party Die, 
to me, that's probably the deepest song out of all these songs that came out outside of outside of man. In fact, it's probably about it's probably a little bit deeper than uh, Meet the Grams. It's about the same, but that's what I mean. But a lot of people don't like the song. But it's not about how, whether you like the song. Is he is he telling the truth? That's what it's about. Is he making it clear enough for you to understand where he's trying to go with it? play on the biggest stages in the world and speaking of the biggest stages in the world we also got to talk about the recent vma awards you know what song was blasting through the speakers during an intermission at that event well we didn't get footage of not like us but i'm sure they played it but they were bumping bbl jersey and not the version with drake rapping over the beat no they had the original version that metro boomin produced where some guy is just harmonizing about drake's booty shots and then we get to the biggest blow to drake that the industry has hit him with yet and that would be kendrick lamar performing at the 2025 super bowl halftime show now, why is this such a blow? Well, with Not Like Us being the number one song in the country, literally after four months of its release, it's still number one on Apple Music. There's no doubt that Kendrick Lamar will find a way to perform that song at the Super Bowl. Even if he has to take out the PDF file lines, he will find a way to celebrate the success of that record and everything that it stands for on a stage that is being watched by over 100 million people. 100 million people are about to hear Kendrick Lamar talk about Drake being a PDF file. That can now, see, here's the thing. This is why when Maul said what he said, I can, un, I can tell that he has a real problem with Kendrick Lamar beating Drake. You might know how he don't have a personal problem with, uh, with Kendrick because I don't, he knows Kendrick, but he has, a, he has a real big problem with Drake losing his battle because what he tried to do, he tried to stop the momentum of something. By saying, because Drake getting an offer to do the Super Bowl has nothing to do with Kendrick Lamar getting the Super Bowl. Nothing. Even though they're battling or whatever, it has nothing to do with it because they're not battling on who's the biggest artist. That's not the battle. That's not the battle. So Maul bringing that up was, was a personal shot that he tried to take to take Kendrick down a level. Because what he said was, he was like, well, uh, this here's where it gets sticky. Drake was offered that four four or uh, four times already or something like that and it's like how is it how why would you even invoke that that has nothing to do with anything but you're looking for a viral moment because drake can't if drake again if drake was your friend he would have got on and said as soon as you said that he would have he would have went he would have went on instagram and said maul is right they did and he would have showed it but he didn't do that he let you burn because this is what he does so for him that for him to try to shit on Kendrick moment, I don't have no respect for him for that. I don't know him personally, but when we talk in podcast stuff, I don't got no respect for Maul. Not a, none at all. None at all. When it comes to when it comes to this situation, anything outside of this, we make we talk or whatever. We talk about how to make a a a, a smash burger, whatever. You know what I'm saying? It with onions on it, cool. You gotta smash it. You gotta get the thing and smash it. Yeah, we could talk about that. But anything when it comes to this situation with Kendrick and, and and Drake, I don't have I won't have nothing to say to people like him, nothing, because he's very disingenuous when it comes to this. Very. Happen with just Kendrick Lamar on his own. There's obviously something bigger at play. Now we also got to talk about something academic said. We're gonna get to a lot of what he said recently because, as Kendrick just pointed out in his new song "Watch the Party Die." Academics has been spreading propaganda to defend Drake for months now. Now, I've been a fan of Academics since 2015 when he used to do YouTube videos just like this, but there's been an extreme bias in the way he reports on Drake versus Kendrick. But that's just not Academics. That's Maul. That's a bunch of a bunch of people. I'm just going to say the top people would be Maul and would and I would even go as far as saying Maul spreads more propaganda than Academics when it comes to uh Drake. Because Maul flat out lies. Academics, he, at least he says, at least he says, um, I, he'll say whether he talked to Drake or not. Now, we don't know if we should believe him or not, but that's what he'll say. But Maul, from, from what academics is saying, Maul actually communicates with Drake. He talks to Drake directly. And it's mind-blowing, simply put. But he also just got a reality check that might have made him realize that he's just a pawn to Drake within this game of clout. 
but we'll touch on that shortly. But as you guys probably know, recently Academics was reacting to Kendrick's new song, saying Kendrick Lamar only dropped it so people would shift the conversation away from criticizing Jay-Z for picking him over Lil Wayne for the Super Bowl performance. And instead, they would now be talking about Drake versus Kendrick once again. I understand that. Um, that's it but for, for academics. Uh, I guess he's going to play. Let me see if he plays that part. Yeah. Academics was listening to the record. And when Kendrick said that they don't hate me, they hate the man that I represent. Academics said what people hate is that Kendrick represents hatred, jealousy, lies, and hypocrisy. Now, this couldn't be further from the truth. And it see, this, and, and, and this, is, this is why I understand why people don't fuck with academics. Right? This is exactly why I say... I understand why people don't fuck with him. Because when he when you spit stuff like that, when you spew stuff like that, I can understand why people don't like you. They have a disdain for you because that's a clear, a clear violation. I'm talking like not, not, it's not objective. No, that's clear. What you just said was a clear lie. He's spreading hatred. How? How is he spreading hatred? This is this is this is the conversation I think we should have with academics. How is Kendrick spreading hatred? Because from what I understand, he warned Drake at least four or five times before he even engaged to the point. And then he even said he even said that he didn't want to do that. He said it. I didn't want to do this, bro. He said it several times. But see, again, these guys don't listen to the lyrics. They listen to the vibe. That's all they care about. In terms of the lies, if you want to say the PDF file stuff or the daughter allegations that Kendrick made are lies, then we got to look at Drake's side as well, because you'll realize he's at the root of these problems for many reasons, which we're about to get to. See, firstly, according to Joe Budden. But even here's another thing, too. People were saying, well, he was lying about Drake being this or Drake being that. We, we can't forget Drake was on stage and I think people try to gloss over this because, again, when you're living in denial, you don't want to admit this. He was on stage with a 17-year-old. I believe he was 20-something years old. He on stage with a 17-year-old. He literally said to her, and this is on tape, on YouTube, you can see it. And I don't understand how YouTube does not block this, but yet and still, it's on YouTube and everybody playing it. And people don't call him out on it. I don't see none of, I don't see Nicki Minaj. I don't see a, a, a baby. Anybody calling him out on this. He was on stage with a teenage girl, 17 years old. And he literally said to her, I like how your breast feels against my chest. If that is not, if that is not a PDF behavior, I don't know what is. That's wild. How can you tell a 17 year old, you're 20 something years old. You ain't 18. You're 20 something. You, I guess she was 24, 27, whatever. Whatever. Five years ago, you were 20. She was 11 or something like that. So you're telling me, yeah, oh, oh, I, yeah something like that. 13 or something, whatever. But this is what I'm saying. What kills me is we give him a pass for it. And you just can't gloss over that and say, well, uh, Kendrick is making allegations. No, we see it with our own two eyes. It's not allegations. Just because he didn't get convicted in a court of law doesn't mean anything. You see what he did. Y'all see it with your own two eyes. There's no way in the world you're going to tell me that, oh, and then I had somebody jump in the comments and say, well, you got to understand, and, I, and I, I'm just giving you a little pushback, but in that state, 17-year-olds are legal age. Like, get, bro, come on, bro. Don't do this. Don't do this. Don't do this, bro. Don't do this. The two allegedly had a conversation before the beef even started when Kendrick Lamar tried to tell him to keep it friendly. This was after Kendrick dropped like that. And it was basically a conversation where they kind of laid their cards out on the table in terms of where they both were at and how far they wanted to take it. Kendrick warned Drake again to keep it friendly on Euphoria after Drake said on his push-ups record, I'd be with some bodyguards like Whitney, referencing Kendrick's fiance. Unlike that, Kendrick came out strictly talking about the state of hip hop and his place in it relative to Drake and J. Cole. He was just saying. And that's a fact. Kendrick literally said, keep, he told him on the phone to keep it friendly. Then Drake drops pushups and represent and, 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 and disrespected or said something about his, his girlfriend or his wife. Right. 
Then, then Kendrick came back and said it again. We could keep this a friendly fade. We should keep it that way. And then he came on 616 in LA and told him, I know somebody in your camp, bro, and he feeding me information. And then Drake's dropped Family Matters, and ho, oh, coincidental, he drops Meet the Grams. Uh, Kendrick drops Meet the Grams. That's how we all know that he has somebody in your camp. He drops a song that's talking about your family after you dropped the song called Family Matters. So it, it's crazy. He's better, and his legacy and message will outlive Drake's. There was nothing personal in that record. He wanted to keep this strictly a battle between what he stands for versus what Drake brings to the culture and the negative way he influences it. By destroying Drake in this battle, he builds his own platform bigger to spread his own message to a larger audience. Simultaneously, Drake takes a hit commercially, people see through his gimmick, less people tune into his next moves, and as a result, he has less influence in the culture. That was the battle that Kendrick wanted to fight. Drake made it about, oh, I have this big red button where I'm gonna call out the fact that you're a woman abuser, you're not married, your son is really Dave Free's kid. And it was after Drake got all of these family issues involved that Kendrick Lamar took a step back and drop Meet the Grams, which featured the allegations of the daughter and everything else that Academics is referring to when he says that people hate Kendrick for being a liar. Those 30 minutes... People don't hate Kendrick, and Kendrick's not a liar. If Drake, I have to err on the side of, of, of what history tells us. If, if Drake hit a kid before, what makes you think he won't do it again? That's number one. You know what I'm saying? Number two... If he's a womanizer and he has a daughter, what does that mean? He don't probably want to have anything to do with his daughter. That's what that means. So I don't understand why you don't understand that. And number three, I'm thinking that if Kendrick was an abuser, it would be out there. But you can't, we can't side on what we believe or what we think. We have to go off of what we know. What we know is. All the things point toward you being a womanizer and hiding children. So how is it that Kendrick is lying when you literally doing everything in your power that he says you're doing? It's in between Family Matters dropping versus Meet the Grams dropping. That was likely Kendrick listening to Family Matters and asking himself how far he wants to take this battle based on how far Drake just took it 30 minutes prior on Family Matters. He was letting Drake decide how dirty he wanted to make this game. The outcome of this beef falled into every move that Drake would make. He quickly decided to bring it into Family, and once Drake took it there, like Kendrick Lamar rapped on Euphoria, you take it there, I'm taking it further, and that's something you don't want to do. So, if Kendrick is a liar, then what is Drake? Drake was lying on Kendrick's Exactly. He warned the dude. Oh my God. I never seen, I never seen a, this is why I said Kendrick Lamar is so good. I never seen a rapper give so much grace to the other rapper, even in a battle, even in a battle. He, he, he warned you several times. You don't want to go down this road, bro. I'm a good guy. I'm trying to be a really good guy. Let's just battle it out, bro. Let's just battle it out. We'll see who the best out of the two. Let's keep it competition. He wanted com Kendrick's been asking to compete with you niggas since uh, be even before Control. But Control, let's just start with Control. What is competition? He literally been saying that for years. He's wanting to compete with y'all. Y'all my contemporaries, what is competition? I'm trying to raise the bar high. Right? So he ain't getting this, he ain't getting this saying, yeah, we could have we kept it. Let's keep it a friendly fade. We should keep it that way. Because I know that me. Let him even make Gunner One look like a saint. I know something. I'm telling you right here that I know something. And what you do, you still do something. Then he goes right before you eat because he knew you was going to drop. Kendrick knew that you was going to drop Family Matters because he probably heard it already. He knew you was going to do that. And he dropped 616 the day you dropped Family Matters. He dropped that the day before and he knew you heard it. And he told you straight up in the song. I know someone in your camp. They're feeding me information. You got to watch who's surrounding you. He literally gave you the blueprint of you could have chilled and went another direction. You could have went a different direction. But what did you do? What did you do? You did exactly what he said. You are so predictable. Even if I'm telling you I know somebody that's telling me information, you are still going to do it because you are a narcissistic narcissistic dude. This is what you're going to do. And what, is, what does Drake do? He drops... Family matters anyway. 
anyway after Kendrick has told you that he knows somebody. This this is not this is what he was saying. He's not a street smart guy. He does he has no common sense. This is why he's where he's at today. I don't care what none of y'all say. Drake career is affected significantly because you got to understand this guy dropped all this music and none of y'all didn't even know what songs they are. Marriage. There's an interview with Whitney's cousin recently where he confirms that none of these allegations are true and she's also in the Not Like Us music video dancing with Kendrick and their kids together. She's wearing a wife beater in the video. If she was really abused by Kendrick physically, would she be wearing a wife beater? Would she even be making an appearance in the Not Like Us music video at all? You gotta ask yourself these questions if you're really that delusional to think that Drake wasn't lying throughout that Family Matters record. Kendrick's also designing his Super Bowl set with Dave Free. I don't think Dave Free had a kid with Kendrick's fiance behind his back and they're still collaborating on things like the Super Bowl or the Not Like Us music video. So you can see here, Drake threw out as many allegations as Kendrick. He was the one that took this beef from strictly hip hop to being about family issues and TMZ gossip style headlines. And Academic says Kendrick is jealous. You wanna talk about jealousy? What about the bar when Drake rapped, Kendrick just opened his mouth, someone go hand him a Grammy right now, or? <laughs> Again. How how you gonna how you gonna say Kendrick how you gonna say Kendrick is jealous of Drake? How? Let's be clear here. I want y'all to understand something. Kendrick Lamar, he could be bigger than Drake if he wanted to. He literally could be bigger than Drake. He proved that. He already proved that. He could be bigger than Drake. If he was to drop as much songs as Drake, he would be bigger than Drake. We have to go off what history tells us. Well, history states that whenever Kendrick Lamar does something, all right, let's, let, let's put it to you like this, right? I want, I want y'all to understand this. Kendrick Lamar, let's go through the songs that he dropped this, this year, and, and he disrupted the whole hip-hop hip industry, the game, right? So he did four songs, right? Not uh, uh, Like That, uh, uh, Euphoria, uh, 616, Meet the Grams, and uh, Not Like Us. He did five songs. And then, and then uh, uh, this song here. So he did six songs. Kendrick did six songs. Drake, after the battle, now this is before, the, this is during the battle. He did five songs during the battle. Drake did, he did one, he did three, song, three, three songs. Well, no, he did four. So he did, he did uh, push-ups. We just count first-person shooter. So first-person shooter, push-ups, uh, tell a maid, meet, uh, family matters, and the heart part six. So Drake did five songs, right? And then we, we even, if, so you just say six because he did something for Instagram. It's the, he did Barry Live too. So that's six songs. So Drake did six, Kendrick did six. Well, Kendrick did five, Drake did six because Kendrick uh, can't count uh, the other song. So let's just say that, right? So we, we, yeah, Kendrick did five and Drake did six. Out of all of those songs, Kent, uh, Drake has deleted all of them off his, off his, off of his uh, Instagram. He deleted Heart Part Six and he deleted Telling Me. So that leaves him with two songs, right? Two, Push Ups, and um, Family Matters, right? Out of all of those songs, Kendrick is still the most successful one, right? Let's just go with Euphoria charted higher than all Drake songs, right? And then not like and Meet the Grams charted higher than all the Drake songs during the battle. And then and then um of course uh not like uh not like us did and um uh uh the other song. Um the song with Metro Boomer. You know, what I'm I always get that song uh, the names confused. Um uh, not like us and uh uh it's uh I can't remember the name. It, it come to me. Anyway, um so his songs they charted higher. Now, Drake, you got y'all gotta understand. Y'all said that Drake is number one. He's the guy. He's the one that makes the hits. He's the one that this was before, this was before Not Like Us came out. You know what I'm saying? So if Drake is the one that makes all the hits, how come his songs didn't chart higher than Kendrick's songs? Now, if people say, well, that's because Kendrick was dissing Drake. Okay. But it still does not take away the fact that it is Drake. We're talking about Drake. So you're telling me a diss to Drake would chart higher than a song that he did himself? 
You know what that's telling me? That people really don't like him. That's what that's saying. Because if it doesn't say that, that means that all his songs will still chart high. Now, let's go to this. After Not Like Us dropped, right? Kendrick did one song after Not Like Us. One. And that's Watch the Party Die. You know what I'm saying? Drake did 15 songs. And none of them meet the top, made the top 10. Not one. So, and on top of that, he had features. People to help him. So my point to y'all is, if you're going to tell me that you believe Drake is bigger than Kendrick, at this point, he's not. He's not. Globally, Drake is big because he has hits all over the world. That's what happened. But right now in the state, in the state of his career, you got to understand. Let's say this. Let's put it to you like this. Eminem is mo known more. Uh, in the world, right? 50 Cent is known more in the world. But when you're talking about Kendrick and 50 Cent, I would probably say Kendrick is more popular than 50 Cent right now. It's the same thing with Kendrick. Drake name rings bells still, but he's he's rent his names don't ring bells because of his hits no more. They ring bells because people don't trust him no more. He got exposed. That's what the problem is with Drake's career. He got exposed. It's like, oh, no, no. People look, look, look at him differently now. That's why his songs ain't charting as high. He hasn't done anything that is going to put him over the top. Because, and I, and I seen another video where a dude said, oh, well, the reason why is because we have a lot of expectations on Drake to actually be better. No, if he is the hit maker and he's that guy, how come... He can't make another hit because he has been exposed. That's why. We're always rapping like you're trying to get the slaves free. Don't even go back to your hood and plant no money trees. Drake is obviously jealous of the man that Kendrick is. But more importantly, he's jealous of the fact that the public views Kendrick as the savior of hip hop while they view Drake as someone who has done more harm for the genre than good. He also lied all throughout the. That's a fact. So when you're talking about you talking about uh, jealousy, who who like who, like come on, bro? Kendrick Lamar is successful, just like Drake's successful. Drake Drake Drake. The reason why he has more hits because he's been doing it for he's been doing it longer and he's been dropping consistently, right? That's what that's what y'all argument always is when it comes to Drake. He's been dropping consistently, but you what you gotta understand is what the more music you drop, the more you become diluted. I mean, you're not as potent. So you're telling me, I think a lot of y'all are just high off of Drake's numbers. So after a while, what happens is you start to realize after, um, after Certified Lover Boy, you start to realize that he's really not as good as y'all thought he was. And now you start to go downhill. So now all these allegations come out and not even, not even the PDF allegation. I'm talking about the him taking music and all his name allegations because he actually really took the music from people. So all of these things come out and now you can't defend a lot of this stuff no more. He has too many knives pointing at him now. Too many. So when are y'all going to just give it up and say, you know what? Maybe he ain't as good as I thought he was, but you can't because you're obsessed with numbers. You're not even obsessed with his music because every argument that y'all have, it's always, he is number one. He has the most hits. That's it. That's it. A lot of y'all would say y'all hate 6 9 but 6 9 has nine number ones, so nine hits. He has nine. That's more than a lot of legendary rappers. Is he better than them? Hits don't make you good because hits is subjective for the most part. You don't really know because if somebody is number one and they could debut at number one, and it could be a reason why they debuted at number one. They could have debuted at number one because ain't no good music on there. And all the music that's that's on there is not good. It could be a bunch of reasons why a person goes number one. But a hit is subjective nowadays because it's too many outlets for you to say it's a hit. If if somebody has a, a million Spotify followers, but they don't have that many followers on Instagram, but they get so many numbers, you're gonna say it's a hit because they have they have a million followers. Or if they stream, I don't know, a, a 200,000, you're going to say it's hit. If, if they only sell this, you're going to say it's a hit. 
That's how y'all look at it. But to me, a hit is much more than that. Our part six, he misinterpreted lyrics. He was saying he planted that information about having a fake daughter and Kendrick took the bait. That was proven to be false later on. So if Kendrick's a liar in this whole thing, then Drake is just as big as one, if not bigger. Now, with the hard part six, that ended round one, right? Kendrick was declared the winner with Not Like Us going number one. And what comes next? Well, Kendrick remains silent, only popping out, no pun intended, at his pop-out concert and the Not Like Us music video. Meanwhile, Drake proceeds to drop track after track in a desperate attempt at trying to make a comeback. First, he remixes BBL Drizzy to Troll with Sexy Red. It flops, doesn't even hit the top 50. This is the first time in a long time for a Drake song to not hit the top 50 of the Billboard charts. But surely it's just a feature, and he'll come back on his own and blow Kendrick's numbers out of the water with his new records, right? Well, first comes a parody record, Wagwan Delilah. We've never heard him in that type of state before. Shows he's either extremely confused or he was trying to troll his way out of the situation. But ultimately, it just lowered the value of his brand. Like, he's not Weird Al Yankovic or The Lonely Island. Drop a comment if you know who those people are. But then Drake proceeds to link up with some pop stars to try and capture that worldwide success that he had with songs like Control L, One Dance, Passion Fruit. Surely it would be on that same level, right? He's done it time and time again. No, it was quite the opposite. We got the Camila Cabello and Gordo records. Both of them performed horribly. It's kind of expected that they would in the States since they're more house music and that typically does better overseas. But those records didn't even do well overseas. They were both flops, and keep in mind the whole time, before he officially releases these records, he plays these songs as snippets to try and gauge the reaction of the general public to see if they're good. And that's the thing. What, where are y'all at on this? Everybody always talking. Like, I see, I'm on my Facebook, I be seeing these bot accounts. And I know they're bot accounts, but I be seeing these accounts, and people be on there commenting like, oh, well, uh, uh, Drake, uh, Drake's, Drake's album just went back to top 100 and Kendrick albums all fell out of the top 100. Drake is clearly the best here, blah, 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 blah. And then people jumping in the comments. Yeah, man, I don't understand how people saying Drake lost that battle, bro. Drake won. You know what I'm saying? He won hands down. And of course, I'm jumping in the comments like, well, which song did Drake, what song do you say Drake won? Like, what was it? Or well, outside of, and then it's always this, outside of not like us, I think Drake won. So you, so again, you going off of numbers because you're saying Drake lost because of not like us, because it's the biggest record. That's what it is. But you're not saying he lost because you said, well, I like, I like, uh, I like family matters better than all the records, but not like us is the reason why he won because not like us is the bigger record. That's why. Cause all you niggas is obsessed with numbers. So you will literally say that Drake lost because he has, he hasn't had the bigger record. That's what it is. So y'all don't even, y'all so confused with y'all subs, y'all didn't even understand that you defeating your own argument within your argument, which is stupid. Not like us is the reason why Kendrick won. But outside of that, he would have lost. But we're not dealing with what's outside of that. We're dealing with reality. And reality is he lost on every front. Enough to release on his own. It shows that this loss to Kendrick has put Drake in an extremely confused state where he doesn't resonate with the mainstream as well as he did just a couple months ago. He keeps trying to test the waters and see what's going to stick. Nothing ends up sticking. But then finally we get to his own solo music where he actually started rapping again. And this is where round two starts. His record, It's Up, drops. He's taking shots at Rocky again. Blue, green, red drops. He addresses Kendrick's verse on Meet the Grams. I have breakdowns of all these different records, how he's taking subliminals at Kendrick. All these things have been broken down. So show me some love. Check out the channel. Check out the other videos and see what's up with those records. But let's talk about where Drake is at right now. Because after those records, Drake clearly showed the world that he was not done with this beef. Then he drops a second batch of music, and this is where it really gets interesting, because the same day it drops, he posts on his fake Instagram account saying, we will win game two. Now, when all you're doing is continuously dropping record after record, trying to make a comeback, each record is riddled with sneak disses and references to the beef that you were just a part of, what else could we will win game two possibly mean besides... I will continue fighting until the public does not think that I lost to you. Trump just tweeted something interesting about his debate with Kamala, which kind of resonates with this situation as well. He wrote on, actually it wasn't Twitter, it was his like truth social, social media platform. He wrote, when a prize fighter loses a fight, the first words out of their mouth is, I want a rematch. And that's exactly what Drake was doing here. Whatever he was implying with game two, he was basically saying he's going to win 
the rematch. Like, we're months out from this whole back and forth, and there's been no real closure for Drake, right? Not Like Us was Kendrick stomping on his grave. He tried to make a comeback with the heart part six. It failed. People viewed it as a desperate attempt to try to play the defense. So he's got no closure here. What else could he do besides try his best to win a round two? Now, in my opinion, what round two means is he will become the more dominant, successful artist making better music than Kendrick in the future after this beef. Now, what's it? The thing is, he won't. He won't. Because the stain that he has on him is not, he can't get that off. The only, the only way he can get that off is if he just stopped rapping completely. He, he, you're gonna, he's going to have fans. But slowly but surely, he's going to start doing this. And see, the thing about Drake is, you got to understand, the thing about him is, he's never taken a break. You know what I'm saying? So he's always been doing this and he's always but obviously there's a reason for that. It's not because he's so excited to do it. He's always been doing it because he has to do it because he's been tied to the contracts. So at this point, you're going to start to see all his fans go like this. They're going to start sliding because people say, well, he has music all over the world. But again, people have a short attention span, even all over the world. They do. And they're not invested in the Drake like they invested in the other artists, especially the artists in their area. He just comes in. And he is uh, what they call um, he comes in, whether you want to say a colonizer to other countries or whatever. But what he does is he comes in and he gives a feature and he's on the songs. Right. But if you look at it, a lot of these, a lot of the, a lot of the people all over the world, when you don't do as much music because he's not really doing he did all these 15 songs, but he's not doing a lot of hit music no more. People start to notice that they start to notice that your songs are not as hits like they were before and it's either because they're not hits because people don't like you no more or you're just not as good as they thought you was that's what it is with him right now he's stuck in that area where people don't really people are like this they don't really know if they really liked him or not so a lot of people will still say they like drake because they want to hold on to his legacy but he's completely tarnished off of this completely you can't ignore that he has he's the biggest artist in the world but he's flopping he never flopped according to y'all he never flopped but he's flopping so now he has nothing else to do but to just chill he should have really took a break honestly if you ask me he should have just conceded and then just started making music but see whoever's around him they're telling him not to do that and like, oh, fuck that bro crazy that, 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 nah bro nah 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 we ain't doing that like we going they're gonna ruin him they're encouraging him to go down this hole and it's not good for him and i'm telling y'all now he's is he is a hundred percent affected by this a hundred percent interesting is before we touch on all the hypocrisy with this round two stuff that drake started we have to look at the fact that since may drake has dropped almost 20 songs since the beef ended Around 12 of them, he was the lead vocalist on the record, and that's damn near an album worth of stuff. Granted, he dropped the first few songs on Instagram and then only dropped them on streaming a week later, but I know him and his label are scrambling right now and realizing and scared of the fact that these songs are charting horribly for Drake's standard. Like, It's Up was the highest charting song, it hit number 28, and it's just consistently dropping down the charts each and every day. It's crazy to think that 12 songs, none of them are in the top 20. Like, to put it into perspective, Nothing Was The Same is a 12-track album. Imagine he dropped records on the level of the 12 tracks off Nothing Was The Same and none of them charted. It shows you not only does he not have the same dominance commercially as he did years ago, but he's also not making the same quality music that he was years ago. But again, he dropped these songs on Instagram first, songs that hit streaming platforms right away, they were features. So, so maybe that's the reason why these songs are flopping, right? Well, then you gotta look at Instagram itself, right? Kendrick just released his new song on Instagram and did more views in the first 24 hours than all the five Drake songs that he released on Instagram did in their first 24 hours combined. Then, because of the hype of Kendrick's new record, Not Like Us shot back up to number one on the Apple Music charts four months after its release. It shows you that people are truly looking for a change and this beef has helped Kendrick reach higher levels of mainstream success than he's ever seen before. 
And currently, again, like I said before, I believe what Drake is implying with round two and what Kendrick would think round two is as well. Logically, it's not that they're going to go bar for bar again. It's that both of them are going to continue their careers. However, they both represent two very different things. So we'll see how the trajectory of hip hop changes based off this beef and the outcomes of it. Will Drake remain the highest selling rapper and will his influence continue to feed onto the next generation? Or will it be Kendrick Lamar's turn to start performing as the top selling rapper within the game and will his message start resonating with the next generation in their first 24 hours combined? Then, because of the hype of Kendrick's new record, not Like Us shot back up to number one on the Apple Music charts four months after its release. It shows you that people are truly looking for a change, and this beef has helped Kendrick reach higher levels of mainstream success than he's ever seen before. And currently, again, like I said before, I believe what Drake is implying with round two and what Kendrick would think round two is as well. Logically, it's not that they're going to go bar for bar again. It's that both of them are going to continue their careers. However, they both represent two very different things. So we'll see how the trajectory of hip hop changes based off this beef and the outcomes of it. Will Drake remain the high? So here's the thing, Kendrick uh, Drake Drake is in a, Drake is in the free fall of his career right now. I know y'all don't want to hear it, but it's the truth. He is on the decline to the point where he probably already declined. The impact and the ramifications of that of this beef has really ruined him. You know what I'm saying? So I'm thinking that we we talk about we talk about whether Drake is is it has is fallen off or fell off or whatever. A lot of y'all, Drake been fell off, but y'all just don't want to acknowledge it because y'all like him so much. But he been fell off. He hasn't made any really good music. That's falling off. Not falling off because people don't know. This is even worse than falling off at this point because people really don't want to have nothing to do with him like that. You can't tell me that this didn't take a a toll, you know what I'm saying? Because I don't see none of y'all really jumping out the window for a new Drake project. A selling rapper and will his influence continue to feed onto the next generation? Or will it be Kendrick Lamar's turn to start performing as the top selling rapper within the game? And will his message start resonating with the next generation much stronger than Drake's does? Well, as of right now, as you've seen by all the diss tracks they released and then all the Instagram tracks that they released, Kendrick is performing much better commercially which is crazy considering the numbers Drake has done in the past. Like, even after he lost the beef to Pusha T, he was still destroying Pusha T and Kanye West's numbers on a sales perspective. Now, let's get to round two, right? What is round two? Well, at first, Academics was saying that new Kendrick music is coming. He said this a couple weeks ago. He said an album is about to drop. DJ Head got on Twitter. He said Kendrick doesn't talk to anyone, especially not academics. Academics went off. He said he's the single greatest journalist ever. He's got industry ties that are feeding him information from Kendrick's camp. That's how he knows about this new Kendrick album coming. He vowed to leak any new Kendrick info the second he got it. He claims his sources were so credible and in revenge for DJ Head trying to attack his credibility, he was saying he was going to leak every new Kendrick music and be the first one to break all these new releases and new plans that Kendrick had before. And that right there, if, uh, that right there, everybody is a person who is under the influence of being delusional. You know what I'm saying? Look at, look at that. You heard what he just said? Academics. I heard that stream academics literally went and said, he's going to leak anything that comes out, anything he doesn't care you are that much invested into this beef and siding with Drake that you're trying to ruin another man's rollout in his career for a guy who you really don't even know. I don't understand it. You, you can't be trusted either because it's like, okay, why do you, and now I don't understand why Drake really ain't your friend either. Because you're just like him. You're an opportunist like him. Y'all both opportunists. Just the fact that he just, he's just a, probably a little more better than you at it. That's just that. Or Kendrick was able to. But a few days later, Kendrick announces that he's performing at the Super Bowl and then drops a record. Academics obviously had no access to this info because he never exposed it. But what's interesting around the same time that Academics is going off on DJ Head he was hyping Drake up, saying that Drake is ready for round two. Drake just dropped these three records, Circadian Rhythm, No Face, and S.O.D. And Academics is gassing them up, 
He's saying Drake is ready for round two. He's loving all the sneak dissing. Game two, we will win. If you think Drake finna abandon and forsake all them fans, you gotta realize this for the fans right here. You think he gonna let some pussy ass niggas have something over him, his legacy, and his fans? No. <laughs> Just watch game two, bro. Just watch game two. And he continues going on. Even after Kendrick announces that he's gonna be performing at the Super Bowl, Academic still tweets out saying, Round two, watch out for it. This is because he didn't. And this it makes me believe that some of this is opportunistic from academics. I definitely think that, think, I definitely think, I definitely believe that he is doing this to, 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 to strengthen or put more eyes on his platform. Because obviously Drake is not going to come out and say anything. But if you sound like you're going against the narrative, and people were going to come to you and listen to you because, believe it or not, people like chilling with the devil. You know what I'm saying? They like they like to, to put their arm around the devil. They like to hang out with the devil. You know what I'm saying? To, for some people, Jesus, God, whoever is too boring for them. They like to chill with the devil. And academics is a person who, who is a magnet for that. You know what I'm saying? I go to him for content. Cause I like to debunk a lot of this stuff. A lot of people are not like me. They go to it because they disagree with him, but they would rather listen to him than listen to somebody who's telling them the truth because it's boring. You know what I'm saying? They want to combat. That's what it is. I realized in the trailer Kendrick dropped when he announced that he'd be performing at the Super Bowl, he said, there's only one chance to win a championship. No round two. Right after that, Academics gets back on stream and says that round two is not happening, not from Drake's end. He is not going back and forth with Kendrick again, and we'd be stupid to think that he is. But just days before this, he was saying that round two was about to happen. Never mind days. Just as Kendrick announces the Super Bowl, Academics says be ready for round two. So what could he be implying by Drake saying he's going to win round two if it's not a back-to-back -back with Kendrick? And why did... And that's what I'm saying. He goes off of whatever he sees that Drake does, and he uses that as an opportunity for, for to get more eyes on him, more eyes on his content. That's what he does. Academics go from saying Drake is ready and going to win round two to then saying round two isn't happening. Well, the only thing I could think of are two things. Either round two means that they're both going to be dropping new music, either new albums, we know that Kendrick has one coming on the way, we know Drake might be dropping a new album with Party Next Door, and in the same fashion Kendrick released Meet the Grams 30 Minutes After Family Matters, potentially Drake is waiting to drop his music around the same time Kendrick does in an attempt to overshadow any success that Kendrick would have garnered. Round two could also- Not gonna work. That's not gonna work. There's no way in the world Drake is gonna drop a song now, or drop an album now. If Kendrick drops his album, Drake can drop 10 albums and people gonna go listen to Kendrick album before that. It's not going to work. That's not going to work. It's not going to work. And he knows that. I think he should just really no, don't do that. Don't do that. Don't do that. Just mean plain and simple when they both drop new music, who will resonate more with the culture? Who will sell more? Whose projects will stand the test of time? Who will the overall culture appreciate more? That's truly to me what round two means. After it's all said and done. But that's the thing, like, can't even argue that point because Drake Drake doesn't have any albums that that shifted the culture. He doesn't. He don't have any albums that did anything on the level of of uh, Kendrick's albums. Not one. Not one. With the back and forth, with both of them putting their cases on display for why the other person is inferior. Round two is simply these two titans dropping music and the winner of that round will be whoever has the most longevity and impact when it's all said and done. Like Kendrick said on Like That, Prince outlived Mike Jack. Now, what round two or game two could also mean, because actually keep in mind, Drake didn't say round two. He said, we are going to win game two. Kendrick Lamar then announces that he's performing at the Super Bowl. We know that the World Cup in 2026 is going to be in Toronto. We know that the World Cup generates a larger audience of viewers than the Super Bowl. Drake has already been involved with the team that's bringing... I didn't, I didn't know that. Well, then again, the World Cup would be soccer, right? Family Cup would be hockey, and the World Cup would be 
That would be soccer, I believe. Yeah, soccer is bigger than NFL. That's a worldwide thing. So we'll see. The World Cup to Toronto in 2026. So is he possibly saying here that, yeah, while Kendrick will do the Super Bowl and perform in front of 100 million people, he'll be performing at the World Cup, which will garner a much bigger audience just two years from now. That's a little bit of conspiracy land. Let me know what you think. But also speaking of conspiracies, Maul from the Rory and Maul podcast, who is known to be the superior Ovi Ho to DJ Academics, Maul said that allegedly Drake has been chosen for the Super Bowl several times, but he turned it down every time. We know that Jay-Z has been on the board deciding who's going to perform for the last four years. Apparently, Drake has been offered it four times, rejected every single time. It's interesting to note, was this before or after Jay-Z got on the board and decided who would be the next Super Bowl performer? And what incentive would he have for turning down an event as big and impactful as that? Let me know. Now, we already know NFL came out and said that they never offered him Super Bowl slot never so I don't know why Elliot Wilson gets on there and says that he has a source and his source says he was he was named he was offered it twice it's like why are you guys doing that why are you doing that because Drake's your boy too he's your he's still your boy and it's like okay and another thing too I I noticed that nobody wants they don't want People don't want Kendrick to be bigger than Drake. It's like Drake has to be the biggest out of all. It's like people have to, they have to like, whoa, well, just because he do the Super Bowl doesn't mean that he's still bigger than Drake. It's like, yeah. So you telling me that nobody can ever be bigger than Drake. He you really burnt that into y'all, y'all, um, y'all head. It's crazy. You guys think on that in the comments, I personally think that this is straight cap. This is just Maul doing his best to defend Drake's honor to make it seem like Drake isn't phased by Kendrick performing at the Super Bowl to make it seem like Drake is the bigger artist and he's already been offered this opportunity. I think it's complete cap. A, why would Drake turn down an opportunity to perform at the Super Bowl when he's literally rapping on first person shooter saying he's as big as the Super Bowl? It's the same reason why people ask, oh, why doesn't Drake do stadiums and he only does arenas? Because arenas fit less people. People think that Drake is a big enough artist where he can do these stadiums like Taylor Swift, The Weeknd, or Bad Bunny. But when it comes down to it, Drake just doesn't have that same global impact. I think it's the same thing with the Super Bowl. His impact, his messaging, everything about Drake doesn't align with the values that the NFL wants represented on a stage like that when they got the sponsors that they have. Now, it's also interesting. Yeah, that's true. That's true. Now, as far as the, as far as him doing uh, arenas and not uh, stadiums, I, I don't think Drake ever did it. I don't know if he would ever did a stadium before. I, I've never seen it. Maybe somebody could point it out. I know he is known all over the world, but I've never seen him do a stadium before. Never. But uh, yeah, this video is almost over. Let's keep it going. Seem to note that there was a lot of post and deleting going on, which raises a lot of eyebrows in terms of what Drake's current status and situation currently is. He posted that we will win game two thing, then he deleted it. He posted a screenshot of his record label trying to get his songs taken off of Instagram so they could put it on streaming platforms. Then he deleted that post and mysteriously some of the tracks went up on streaming platforms with a very cryptic weird description that read, if you don't want to sort through Drake's 100 gigabyte data dump online, then you could listen to all his new records right here on Apple Music. It almost seemed like his record label was taking a shot at him. Then we get no face with Playboy Cardi, but once it hits streaming platforms, Playboy Cardi's not on that record. You have to note also that Playboy Cardi is signed to ASAP Rocky and Playboy Cardi also has ties to Kendrick Lamar. And that raises the bigger question at this point, who is left in Drake's corner? People are see that. Now, Playboy Cardi probably didn't even know he was going to put that record out. And he didn't really say anything. He just said, no praise, no praise. He didn't really say anything on the record. He didn't rap on the record. He just said, no praise. That was it. Speculating he's also beefing with Lil Yachty as Lil Yachty unfollowed him on Instagram and Drake took off his verse off the song S.O.D. that they had together. People also thought that he was beefing with Lil Wayne when Lil Wayne did a song with YBN Corday. And on it, he rapped, you're a teddy bear, a teddy gram. However, recently we'd come to find out that Wayne recorded that verse all the way back in 2021. And he's since been seen out with Drake multiple times. They did a whole tour together since then. So obviously those weren't shots at Drake. 
but he was also singing Kendrick Lamar's Not Like Us record. He was rocking an XO chain gifted to him by The Weeknd, who has a very public feud with Drake. So people are kind of confused on their current situation. Obviously, again, Yachty and Playboy Cardi. And my thing is, just because he put that record out in 2021 doesn't mean that it doesn't apply to now. Because the record came out now, and if he has an issue, maybe he, at the time, maybe he didn't want to put the record out. Maybe he was saying, nah, I don't, nah, don't put that out. Because I don't want I don't want people to think that, <laughs> you know, I don't want people to think I'm taking shots at Drake. But now the album, the record comes out, and it's like, obviously, people going to think you were taking a shot at Drake. Like, come on. Potentially might not be in Drake's corner right now. Nicki Minaj was recently sticking up for Drake and Lil Wayne for not getting that Super Bowl show. But just weeks ago, she was calling him ugly boy on Instagram and sneak dissing him for collaborating with Lotto. So which artists are really left in Drake's corner that he can use the same way he has in the past to integrate their sound into his to elevate his own records? It's going to be very hard for him to find people in the future to collaborate with and who are still by his side to defend him if he keeps getting attacked by all these different rappers. Even fans in the Drake Reddit were trying to understand Drake's mental state and why he ever responded to Kendrick in the first place saying it was a horrible move. Fans from Italy were literally saying that they know people who had never heard a Drake song before in their life and they were even asking why there's a PDF file rapper in America right now. And check out this clip of someone on Academic Stream trying to put into perspective to act that Drake doesn't care about him. When he needs you, he'll send you DMs, he'll play old buddy buddy with you, but he really don't fuck with you. That's why niggas are treating Drake like this, because he's a fuck nigga. You showing him mad love, he don't show you no love. You think Drake shows you love? Yeah, Drake showed me a lot of love. How? What's he do to show you love? I got excuse. <laughs> Yeah, you know, when a, nigga, when a nigga voice cracked like that, you know he knows he's not telling the truth. You know he knows he's not telling the truth. <laughs> oh, my God, bro. That's crazy. Listen to that. That's crazy. <laughs> In the city, here's 10 tickets to my show. Backstage, pull up. He Yo. said Ice Spice a jet before he sent you one. Asking why there's a PDF file rapper in America right now. And check out this clip of someone on Academic Stream trying to put into perspective to act that Drake doesn't care about him. When he needs you, he'll send you DMs, he'll play old buddy buddy with you, but he really don't fuck with you. That's why niggas are treating Drake like this, because he's a fuck nigga. You showing him mad love, he don't show you no love. You think Drake shows you love? Yeah, Drake showed me a lot of love. How? What's he do to show you love? <laughs> <laughs> Oh my God. You're so little alone. <laughs> oh my God. Let's go. I got exclusive info. I'm hey, on that's not love. I'm on the you, what, what do you do with that exclusive info? You say it to the world, you gas it up 10 times more. He's using you as a free a billboard, free yeah, promo. No, Showing you love is your act. I'm in the city. Out. Here's 10 <laughs> tickets to my. I told the nigga, he called the nigga a walking billboard. <laughs> that's a, that, Yo, that's what I was trying to figure out earlier. I was trying to find the words. That was perfect. Academics, you're a walking billboard for Drake. <laughs> walking promo, nigga. <laughs> Hitting the flies out, nigga. <laughs> Show, backstage, pull up. He yo. said I spice a jet before he sent you one. Hack, you're the biggest media platform, man. What that got to do with Drake? He's the biggest rapper. And you're promoting him. Hack, that be dropping ass music, but you won't say that because you're a number one fan. Like Even if it's your ass, you might get offline, might tell niggas you know, yo, that shit was ass. But nigga, you get online, you jump into it, doing backflips, that nigga <laughs> can't give you no tickets to his show. Now, if Drake loses yo, academics, yo, he yo, loses. Bro, that, yo, you can see, listen, bro, listen, listen, bro. You can see it in his face. You can see the denial in his face. He literally is in denial. He can't believe that somebody told him this. And I know he knows this is true. And he probably sit with himself every night and he thinks about this. And it's very sad to see this, man. It's very sad. I don't feel sorry, but it's very sad to see. This is sad to see because somebody that is obsessed with somebody like this and act as if like they, they make these they make these these friendships up as if these people really care about you. And they don't look at his face. This is crazy. 
You can see it. But he really don't fuck with you. That's why he's a treating Drake like this, because he's a fuck nigga. You showing him mad love, he don't show you no love. You think Drake shows you love? Yeah, Drake showed me a lot of love. How? What's he do? To show you love. I got exclusive info. I'm hey, on the that's not love. I'm on the you, what, what do you do with that exclusive info? You say to the world, you gas it up 10 times more. He's using you as a free a billboard, free yeah, promo. No, Showing you love is your act. I'm in the city. Here's 10 tickets to my show. Backstage, pull up. He Yo. said Ice Spice a jet before he sent you one. Act, you're the biggest media platform, man. What that got to do with Drake? He's the biggest rapper. And you're promoting him. Act, that nigga be dropping ass music. But you won't say that because you're a number one fan. Like Even if they ask you, might get offline, might tell niggas you know, yo, that shit was ass. But nigga, you get online, you jump into it, doing backflips, that nigga can't give you no tickets to his yeah, show. That, now, if Drake that loses laugh, academics. That laugh right there is, I know, I know, he, I know you got me. That's a, <laughs> yo, bro, get out of here, man. Nah, bro, nah, bro. Ah, nah, bro, nah, nah, nah. You really seen her cheating on me? Nah, bro. <laughs> nah, bro. Nah, nah. Nah, what you saying? She really was? For real? Nah. Um, nah, bro. Nah. That's that. That's that right there. Crazy. He loses the media war, and then he really has no big players in the industry or who control the narrative by his side. But many people already think that academics is biased, so... I don't know if what he says is very valid when he's talking about Drake specifically in terms of the general public, like when hip hop fans hear academics critique a new Drake song or a new Kendrick song, do they go into it thinking that he's coming with that Drake bias? It's hard to say. But between people like academics potentially finally waking up, between Drake potentially beefing with his former friends like Lil Wayne, Lil Yachty, beefing with his record label, being unconfident in the rollout of his new music, his new music flopping, him being confused on his own next move, one day saying he's going to win game two, then the next day saying there's no game two, him being scared and confused of Kendrick's next move, it's left Drake in this position we've never seen him for in his entire career. And if I had to describe it in one word, I would just say confusion. I think he's confused on who's with him and who's against him. I think he's confused on how he should be releasing music going forward. I think he's confused on the direction of the sound of the music that he should be taking going forward. I think he's confused on whether or not he should be engaging in a round two with Kendrick. And I just think he's confused on how this is going to play out in the long term on his legacy. And that's for you guys to decide in the comments. Me personally, I've said this a million times. I think what Drake needs is another nothing was the same. 12 tracks, 40 production, boy won the production, bring it back to the basics, do your singing, do your rapping. But most importantly, get a little introspective, get a little self-reflective, peel back those layers a little bit. Like look at Kendrick. He had people dancing to Not Like Us, a banger that defined the summer, but now we're in the fall and he's getting more introspective. He's coming back with a calmer perspective and he's reflecting on everything that transpired. I'd like to see the same from Drake. I'd like to see some vulnerability, some maturity, some self-reflection, some desire for growth. I don't need another no face where he's doing his best play by Cardi impersonation. I don't need a you know housekeeping nose with Lotto where he's trying to make In My Feelings part two or all these pop records with Camille Cabello or these troll records with Sexy Red and the Wagwan Delilah stuff. Like every record that Drake has dropped has been the exact opposite of at least what I've been looking for from him if he wants to make the best comeback he could possible. I think again, he needs to show us that human side of him. Him saying that his therapist is quitting on him because he keeps talking about beef and women and money only proves Kendrick's point better than it actually helps Drake. But let me know what you guys think in the comments. Let me know what you want to see next. Let me know what is next. All right, man. Yeah, man. Yeah, man. Yeah, man. I know that's a long, I know this is a long episode, but I had to do it. This is a, a, a Weekend Warrior episode. That's what I'm going to start calling this episode. These long shots. Weekend Warrior episodes. They, they may be long. They may not be long. Who knows? Anyway. um, Yeah, this is, this is, this is what it is. This is what it is. It's, 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 <clears throat> it's. He, it's hard for him to go back to the basics because he's been exposed. So when, no matter what he does, if Drake was to come out and do a whole rap album, it's not going to get critically acclaimed. People are going to look at it as he fell off because they're so used to him doing hits. If he comes out with a banging rap album, I'm talking like fire rap album, because I don't think he could do a conscious album. No, it, it, it's just going to sound weird if Drake does a conscious album. He never talked conscious before. And all of a sudden now he talks conscious. He could come out with a, a vulnerable album, but people would say that Drake's always been vulnerable. He's always been in his feelings all the time. But I think that the vulnerable album that he would have to make would be more of he take accountability for everything he has done 
And I think that that would change people's mind on them. Now, as far as the PDF thing, that will never change because this the too much. It's the document is in people's face. You know what I'm saying? It's in people's face. People are always going to feel like you like younger, uh, younger meat or whatever, <clears throat> younger women. That's what people are going to look at. Not even younger, younger girls. These people are going to look at that you like. But outside of that, I don't think that it's, I don't think it's, I don't think he can recover from this. I honestly think that Drake picked the rat. He picked the worst time to actually beef with uh, somebody like Kendrick. He should have just kept, he should have just kept doing what he was doing. Because if you and Kendrick talk on the phone and Kendrick literally tells you about sneak this and then he say, let's keep it friendly and you do it anyway. And now he, he he's telling you that he got over your working for him. He got you to the point where you're scared to even put out music because you don't know if that's true. I know people saying that's not true. That's not true. But you got to look at what history tells us. And what history tells us is he dropped Family Matters and Kendrick dropped Meet the Grams. And it was basically mirroring you talk about my family. And I'm going to talk about your family. There's no way in the world you're going to sit here and tell me that Kendrick don't got some type of info because he could have dropped. He could have dropped uh, not like us. But actually, he did not like us after that. And that's crazy that he did it after that because he replied, he rebuttaled one of the bars and not like us came out, I believe, the next morning or the next day. You know what I'm saying? So it is what it is. But yeah, man, glad y'all could stick with me to the end, man. Give yourself a round of applause, man. I really appreciate y'all sticking with me to the end. I know sometimes episodes could be long, but hey, man, sometimes you got to get things off your chest, man. I love y'all. Y'all have a good night. You know what I'm saying? And see y'all. Peace. Bye. <laughs>